Henry Coppin has set the stage for what should be a dramatic and exciting afternoon as we bring you the finals and the individual events. With the Olympic boycott having diluted the field in the summer of 1980, today's field will be the finest to perform under one roof since the 1979 World Championships. Titles will be decided in the floor exercise, ball, balance beam, and uneven bars, and you'll watch 1984 Olympic hopefuls like Maxi Ganauk of East Germany and America's Julianne McNamara, the leader going into the finals of the balance beam. The Women's World Championships today on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Direction to America of her former coach, Bella Caroli. Coach Caroli himself will be with us at ABC Sports Control for his first American television interview since his defection. All of that today on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Capacity crowd will look on. They've had plenty to cheer about already in these world championships because the Soviet women won the team title and won it rather handily. And in the women's all-around competition, a young Soviet gymnast by the name of Olga Bicharova, a name you may not have heard of before, but a name you should file away because you'll be hearing a lot about Olga Bicharova between now and the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles, won the women's overall title. As far as the Americans are concerned, as a team, the American women finished a somewhat disappointing sixth. But I think things look a bit more promising today. And for more on that, let me bring in our expert commentator on gymnastics, Gordon Maddox. I think we have a right to expect a little bit more from the Americans this afternoon. Oh, absolutely, Al. The big story for us is going to be an American named Julianne McNamara. Julianne finished in a strong seventh place tie in the all around. And now going into the individual event finals, she is actually in first place on the balance beam. Her strong competition is going to come from a young East German named Maxi Ganau. Now, no one knows better than Julianne McNamara that in the history of American gymnastics, only one woman has ever won a gold medal in the World Championships, that being Marcia Frederick in 1978 in Strasbourg, France, where she won the gold on the uneven parallel bars. Now, you mentioned Maxi Ganauk of East Germany. She has already won her first title in the vault. Let's have a look. Into the finals, Maxi carried a 9.875 mark, which she was awarded in team competition. She received a 9.8 for this, and the cumulative mark represents the final total for each of the competitors today. And her layout, Sukahara, is really a winning ball. Now, the first event we'll take a look at will be the uneven bars, and there's a three-way tie for first place between Elena Davidova of the Soviet Union, Maxi Ganauk of East Germany, and Ma Yan Hung of China. Julianne McNamara of the United States is tied for fifth. And here's Julianne, who carries in a score of 9.80 into the finals, trailing the leaders by a tenth of a point. Julianne McNamara, 16 years old, out of Danville, California. Watch this start, too. It's an interesting start. She goes all the way to the high bar. She'll dive with a half, and take it right up into a high start, pivot down into her giant swings. And watch her get out of her giant swings. An interesting wrinkle. She drops into an eagle position. Nice setup on, his, on her uh, handstand. Hip circle. Into a staller shoot. Another staller shoot. Now, hips. She does a hip circle, front somersault with a... Nice, nice landing. Julianne McNamara with a nice performance in the uneven bars. And of course, coming up next for Julianne will be the balance beam, the event in which she is the leader. As we await Julianne's score, you can see the five boxes on top. They will indicate each individual judge's scoring. And at the bottom, under 119, Julianne's number will come the score. The perfect score, of course, would be a 10. You would throw out the high mark and the low mark, as well as that of the superior judge, which is upper left, when we see each of the individual judges' scores. And a 9.9, .9, a very promising start for Julianne McNamara today, giving her a total of 19.70 in the uneven bars. And now the young lady that's won everyone's heart here, Olga Bicharova, the all-around champion, 15 years old, she is four feet six and 65 pounds. And fourth in the uneven bars coming into the finals, carrying in a mark of 9.85. She'll jump to a full turn, catch the low bar. And after this, her routine is basically a stock routine, except it's in the past when I've seen it, it's been so well executed. There's a staller with a half turn into a staller the other direction. Little mistake, maybe a major mistake, I don't know. If it was a mistake, it was well covered, I'll tell you that. Getting set up for her dismount now. 
It'll be a Coleman each. Front somersault with a half twist. Olga Vicharova, I'm sure I'm not alone. When you look at Olga, she appears to be 10, 11, at most 12 years old. You must be 15 to compete in the World Championships. And the documents handed forth from the Soviet officials indicate that she reached her 15th birthday last month. Well, let's see if this is a mistake now. Coming out of this stalder, it looks to me like she doesn't have enough rotation and stalls it out right there. And then swings down, takes a straddle ball over the low bar. Whether it's a... Oh, look at that, Al. Well, the judges obviously feel it was a mistake. They give her a 9.55. Her chances for a medal in this event evaporate. She is the world champion as far as all-around competition is concerned, but this is the only event in which she will appear today. The criteria for a compact copier of a different... As we return to the World Gymnastics Championships here in Moscow at St. Basil's Cathedral on the left, and Tsar's Tower ascending from the Kremlin Wall on the right. Now we'll take a look at Elena Davidova of the Soviet Union, who carries in a mark of 9.9, .9, one of three in the time for the lead coming in at the moment. Julianne McNamara is in first place. Boy, she's got some difficulty in her routine. She'll do giant swings forward, and then a reverse hecht over the, the uh, higher bar. Here it comes, reverse hecht right over the top. The Olympic all-around champion in 1980, Elena Davidova, 20 years old. Now watch this full and a half pivot out of the giant swing. Whips the bar. That is not a mistake when she hits the bar. And she'll do a front summy to a front landing, a very difficult landing. That's a whale of a routine, Al. And the way things have been going thus far at the World Championships, it wouldn't surprise us to see a 10. <laughs> I remember in 1972 joking about an 11. It's going to have to happen, isn't it? The way things have gone thus far this week. Well, now let's take another look at this full and a half twisting pirouette. She comes over the bar. There it is. It takes very fast hand action. Good work. There it is for Davidova, a mark of 9.8, giving her a total of 19.70. And right now she is tied with Julianne McNamara. Move the number 45. Now Maxi Ganauk of East Germany, who would need a 9.85 to move into first place. Not out of the question. She really attacked this apparatus. What a gymnast she is. Already a, a very bright star. Giant swings were great. Veronin over the top was beautiful. Keeps lots of rhythm into her exercise. Now she'll be getting set up for a dismount. There it is. Cast front with a half twist. That's a sensational routine. And Maxi eight. got out. Well, she's already won the ball, and she's got a decent chance now to win the gold here. She needs a 9.85 in that routine, and then trying to stave off Ma Yun Hung, who will be coming up next from China. Well, let's take another look at her attack on the bar. Watch, she back rises all the way over in her Veronin vault. Comes up to the high bar again. Tap the bar and kip up into the handstand. Now another pivot. Now watch your stomach whip back almost to the handstand again. And then, of course, this tremendous dismount. Cast, front somersault with a full and a half twist right there. And there's the mark of 10 for Maxi Ganauk of East Germany. Maxi Ganauk, by virtue of that 10 clinches, no worse than a tie for first place in the uneven bars. And the only way she won't win it out right would be if Ma Yun Hung follows with a 10. Well, there's Julianne McNamara, who has a chance to pick up a medal here because she's tied with Elena Davidova. Right now, they are behind Maxi Ganauk with Ma Yun Hung yet to come. And here is Ma Yun Hung from China, 18 years old, needs a 10 to tie Maxi Ganauk for first place. And as good as Ganauk was, Ma could be better. She is the most precise, uneven bar worker I have ever seen. Now, watch her when she gets to her giant. She'll do a hip circle, shoot with a full turn. Perfect. She'll do a Veronin over the bar. Working very well. A little bit over on her hip circle. About where everyone else does this, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and watch this, a full twist in. Heck, Sunny off. Wow, what a routine. Well, if, that, if that's not a 10, Al, we won't have any well, more Well, we've seen uh, Maxi get out, pick up a 10 here. And now we'll await 
let the judges rule as far as Mayan Hung is concerned. Let's take another look at the dismount. Well, now Ma comes down, stomach whip, straddles over the low bar, hips. Now watch the dismount. It's just unbelievable. Does a hip circle, releases the bar, and then does a full twist into an absolute dead landing. Oh, sensational. There's the mark a 9.9 .9 for Ma Yan Hung, and the crowd here doesn't like it. They thought it was a perfect 10. That means Maxi Ganap has won another gold medal. He's two for two. What did you think, Gordon? I have to go with the crowd, Al. I thought that uh, Ma was a little bit better. So Julianne McNamara ties Elena Davidova for third and wins the bronze medal in the uneven bars. Maxi Ganak of East Germany. This is the event. Ma Yun Hung of China finishes second. And Julianne picking up the bronze. We'll be back to watch the medal ceremony after this. <laughs> medal but an announcement has been made over the public address system reprimanding the Chinese gymnasts for not appearing for the medal ceremony however this is their form of protest as the rest of the competitors make their way up to the stand and congratulate Ganav Davidova and McNamara well Al you know in the first Chinese appearance in world championship competition in 79 in Fort Worth the Chinese were so grossly underscored that the other competitors actually demonstrated this is the first visit by a Chinese gymnastics team to Moscow in 30 years, and they'll certainly be leaving with a bitter taste. And under the circumstances, I can hardly blame the Gordon because Ma's performance did look like a 10. I couldn't agree more. Julianne McNamara of the United States, the spotlight somewhat taken away from her. Nonetheless, an impressive performance. She picks up a bronze, and of course, she is seeking a gold medal in the balance beam event. She's the leader going in, and we'll be back with that later when our coverage of the World Gymnastics Championship resumes. She's currently sixth. Boy, she's had a good career so far. Remember the success she had in the American Cup one year when she won the Cup, the all-around championship there. She would need a 9.75 on the beam to temporarily move into first place. It's so interesting, Al, that here we are, the Americans have been, had so many problems on the balance beam. Nelson qualified two of the ladies for the finals in this event. Two of the eight, Julia McNamara, of course, the leader. Tracy carries in a 9.55 and is in sixth place in the balance beam. Ariel walk over into back handspring, back handspring, very well executed. Right on the money. Now she has to work sideways. She has to work upright as you're seeing her now, upside down in the inverted position. There she goes. She has to work down on the beam. She's got all those things out of the way. She has to also have some move in there where she does a, a full pirouette. There's her flare. Talk to her by Kurt Thomas. He's had an impact on all of gymnastics, hasn't he? Fine, one leg back coming. Trace looks comfortable. He looks very confident. Now, the routine duration must be a minute 10 to a minute 30. She's nearing the end. You see, Tucker just did one heck of a performance. Well, six was coming in. And not a chance. At the moment, we would think to move up. Julianne McNamara there to greet her as she descends. It should be a pretty good score. And Tracy waves to her friends in the stands. Another look on the beam. Now, this thing is only four inches wide, and yet she does an aerial cartwheel into back handspring, back handspring, has it right on track. In fact, in her routine, the balance has been magnificent. Tracy Talavera turning in a fine performance and awaiting her mark. And it's a 9.7 for Talavera. The crowd doesn't like it at all. And I don't either. I thought it was a much better performance than that court. Much better. Well, the scores have been so high. Normally, that would be a fine 9.7 routine, but not in this competition. Right. Exactly. Under the circumstances, a low score for Talavera since they've been so high to this point in the competition. We'll have more of the balance beam event in a moment. But while in Moscow... Right. And the score, that's reflected, 9.15 for Elena Davidova. 
who is having some ethyl chloride applied to her ankle, sustaining a slight injury here. Coming up next, of course, will be Julianne McNamara of the United States. There she is, the leader, seeking a gold medal on the balance beam. And we'll be back with her performance in just a moment. <laughs> Ooh. Ah. Big international debut, the World Championships. It's the first time you're here. You've tied for seventh at the all-around, and now you're leading in the balance beam going into the finals. Now, what kind of pressure do you feel going into the finals in the balance beam in that position? Well, I'm just going to try to do my best. Usually, um, being one of my weaker events, so I'm really glad that I'm able to compete in finals. <laughs> Well, Julianne McNamara doesn't have to worry about the beat her now. McNamara. Only has to really think about her own performance because she's in first place. She carries in a mark of 9.675 with only Maxi Ganau to follow. So she can put a lot of pressure on Maxi and take a giant step, obviously, toward the first gold medal by a U.S. woman since Marsha Frederick in 1978 with a good routine here. Well, really, when you think about it, Al, nobody can really beat her. She could beat herself. And that's all she has to prevent, is just beating herself. She's just got to get up and get through the routine that she practices day in and day out. Now watch this one-arm handstand. Oh, that's sensational. Great beginning. And I think that she does possess a strong sense of concentration. Whoa, that's a slight slip there. What do you figure, a tenth word? A tenth is maximum. Okay. Very tentative, though. Mm -hmm. She's glad to have that one behind her. There's a planche. Nice move. Now she's got a full twister off, and that's it. Al, I think we're looking at another middle winner. Very possibly, Julianne McNamara. As we await her score, Julianne, who has already picked up the bronze medal for her routine in the uneven bars, definitely a medalist in this event. The big question is, will it be gold? There is a... I'm telling you, almost this. impossible to believe. Look at the uh, the individual scores. The judging has just been absolutely well, unbelievable. There's nothing lower than a 9.7. I think it's a mistake. I on do it. too. I think uh, the scoreboard is incorrect. Frankly. They've been complaining about the electronic scoring system. It might be a mechanical yeah. mistake. I, I, I don't understand what the situation is because the lowest individual score was a 9.7 and yet up it came with a 9.55. Nevertheless, at the moment, here's Maxi Ganau of East Germany who has a gold-plated opportunity to pick up a gold medal here simply by virtue of the 955 given to McNamara on what appeared to be a much better routine. And what a great start she had. Back handspring up to the beam. She's done a back summy. She has a painful injury on her heel. So painful that she withdrew from one of the preliminary uh, competitions on the floor exercise. I don't think it's bothering her at the moment. Another tumbling move coming up. Back handspring, back handspring, slight mistake. Not as great as Julianne's, but slight. Maxie does seem to be coming into her own, doesn't she, Al? Well, she's trying to make it three out of three. She's already won the ball. She's won the uneven bars. And she's the last competitor now on the balance beam, trying to make it three for three.
saw the 9-5-5 given to McNamara. What that does, it puts Tracy Talavera in a position where she could win a medal. Well, Maxie's nearing the end of her exercise, and she has really put one together. Double throw twister off. That's really a fine routine, just that one small mistake. She needs a 9.7 to finish first. Now, you would think that's worth a 9.7, but then again, we thought that Julianne McNamara's routine was certainly worth a whole lot more than a 9.55, the way the scoring has been going thus far. You can see how disappointed she is, and you can understand why if you saw the routine. And Roy Kreitzer, her coach, is saying, well, next time, Julianne, we'll get him. Maxie doesn't look any happier, does she? Well, she doesn't look any happier, but she could be just a few seconds away from her third gold medal. for Maxi Ganau giving her another first place. Three for three. And in a moment, we'll be back to check the official results of the balance beam. Seems the exercise should have ended. We'll take another look at Julianne McNamara's routine to see if we can figure out just where she added up enough mistakes to go overtime. And Sam was good. The required two seconds. Now, Julianne has a reputation for having a long routine. And so the slightest of errors can come like that, where she has to break the rhythm of a routine just long enough to catch her balance. Those small mistakes add one upon the other. Now she seems to be back into her tempo here. And you know, being charged up, being really super adrenaline, after all, coming into the World Championships as the leader might change your tempo just a little. Up into another handstand. Now, I noticed in her routine that she held this planche both lower and longer than I've ever seen her hold it. Probably, again, because of the adrenaline. And a slight mistake there. Remember, the slightest of the errors add up until you have a much larger problem than you think. Now we're going to insert a clock down in the lower right. There's 120, 121. Listen for the warning. There it is. And now she has to get off. There's 28, 9. And the final, and one second over, cost her a ton. Adeptly put, Gordon, the slightest error can compound itself, creates a situation whereby she finishes fifth instead of second. But for Tracy Talavera, it affords her the opportunity to pick up the bronze medal in the event. The winner, Maxi Ganau of East Germany, Chen Yong Yang of China finishes second with Wu Chan Ni and Tracy Talavera sharing the bronze. For Julianne, she settles for fifth place instead of silver. An interested spectator here in Moscow is Nadia Komenich, the star of the 1976 Olympics. As many of you know, her coach, Bella Caroli, has defected to the United States. Nadia is here, but as I say, as a spectator, not as a competitor. Some seem to feel that Nadia has passed up competition at the World Championships because of the marks she received during the 1980 Summer Olympics here in Moscow. Well, our Kurt Thomas talked to her earlier. Well, Nadia, it's, it's good to see you again. And, uh, you know, we toured together on the last Nadia tour in the States. And, uh, how come you're not competing here in this competition? Because um, I had the university games in July and then some exams for the university and not enough time to prepare. So it's basically the exams and you really haven't had time to train and it's got nothing to do with the scoring or the last time you were here in Moscow? Yeah. Yeah. A, a lot of people think that, you know, there, there's a problem in the scoring here. Do, do you feel that way? Yeah, sometimes. Is that is that one of the reasons you're not competing? Maybe. <laughs> um, what what about Bella? Is uh, you know he came to the states and stayed there with us. And uh, what does your country feel about that now? It uh, was hard for us, but that's the truth now. You yeah, can do nothing. There's nothing you can do. No. Do you think it's hurt your program? Not now, because I have just few um, 
Yes, I don't know yet. How yeah, what, to compete and... what about the younger gymnasts? Do you think that Bella leaving has hurt your team in general? Yeah, I think. Yeah, because he was a very strict and tough coach. I know you didn't like him very much at times, but he was your coach and he made Nadia. What, what do you think about him leaving? I, I don't know why. It's very sad for us. It's very sad. A very candid Nadia, who also told Kurt she's in training for the 1983 World University Games and is thinking of competing in the 1984 Olympics. By the way, the Romanians have not won a medal here in Moscow. The Americans, meanwhile, have won a pair of bronze medals. And when we come back, we'll see the floor exercise and Julianne McNamara's bid for a medal in an event in which she's currently a strong fourth. <laughs> I'm sitting right now in ABC Sports Control with the man that Nadia and Kurt Thomas were talking about, Bella Caroli, former coach of the Romanian national team, currently coaching in Oklahoma, Norman, Oklahoma. This is his first appearance on American television, as a matter of fact, since defecting to the United States. Thank you for being with us, Bella. And first of all, when you defected, you and your wife, uh, it, it must have been with some hesitation. Your little girl was still back in Romania at that time. You weren't sure what would happen there. Did you have fear when you did this? Oh, yes. Uh, we were very decided, uh, you know, and we were thinking very serious about and after we did this step. Uh, we had two main reasons. One was uh, our disagreement with Romanian Gymnastic Federation, uh, which became uh, more acute during the time and the last period, actually in the last period. And uh, another reason was we did almost everything in gymnastic uh, <laughs> Oh, okay. uh, you had accomplished everything that you had set out to do, winning world championships, Olympics, and so forth. Uh, but then you say you had disagreements with the Romanian government. What were these disagreements? They must have been very big and important to make you take this step. Oh, yeah. So we had our, I, actually I had my system and we developed our system during the time, during the past 20 years, uh, based uh, to our practical experience. Mm -hmm. And we set up a school, a special school, actually every member of uh, our national team was the school uh, a member of your uh, yes, club, a member yeah. of, yes oh, of my school so and they uh, pressed us you know to change the line they pressed us you know to do many different kinds of things actually propaganda for uh, for them and for uh, romanian uh, political system you know the so social interrupt system your training and 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 the train of training that you wanted to have yes. leading to the championships to do yes. just propaganda for the government yes uh, and was some of this just monetary? Did the government need the money? So, yes, sometime for uh, financial reason and sometime for propaganda reason. Uh, anyway, was no uh, in concordance with my uh, own idea about gymnastics and about sport. So you came here really for professional reasons, would you say, rather than personal reasons? I, I, I consider professional reasons. Nadia Komenich sat there talking to Kurt Thomas at the World Championships and she said, and she looked like it was true, that she is very sad that you're going. But then Kurt said, many times you were really angry with your coach and she didn't deny that. Did you have a good relationship with Nadia or a bad relationship? <laughs> so we had a long relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Uh, yes. Almost 13 years. Mm -hmm. So during that time, absolutely normal. We had a very good relationship before and around the Montreal Olympics game, beautiful relationship, very successful. After World uh, Olympics game, she became a big star. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and like every big star, she became a little bit more indisciplined. But head became anyway. a little big. Oh yes, uh -huh. <laughs> yes. So in that time. And she had actually too many temptation in that time. And, actually, and uh, our federation gave her too many attention, you know. And so, and gave her, uh, mm, proposed her too many things to do. So, and uh, they, she, actually, she didn't understand in that time, gymnastics is, is a hard sport, is a too hard sport to be able to play and to, to do too many I think I understand. other things. It's very know. much like a father saying to his daughter, it's oh, yeah. very nice to go to the dance and be in the play in school, but don't forget to study. Oh, Coach yes. Caroli, it's exactly. a great pleasure having you with us. I really appreciate yeah. your coming in from Oklahoma. Welcome again to America. We'll be back with much more of the World Gymnastics Championships on Wide World of Sports.
Moscow. Sandy Ann McNamara still in contention for a medal. She's fourth. On the women's all-around title for 1981. Interestingly enough, though, Gordon, uh, that's the only event that she is eligible to be in here simply because of a quirk in the rules. It really is a quirk, too. In order to qualify for the finals, you simply have to be in the top eight in each event from the preliminaries. Now, in order to spread the competition around to the less advantaged countries, the FIG has elected to make a rule saying that only two could represent any one country. Now, Olga Bicharova qualified honestly in every event. She finished in second in one event, tie for second, in third in another event, fifth in one event, and sixth in one event. But because teammates were above her in all of those events, she'll only be seen in the one event. Now, I think that any rule that does that to any gymnast... Elena Davidova, who won the all-around at the 1980 Olympics here in Moscow, 20 years old. A very ebullient, a very expressive performer. Got a lot of Olga in her, as a matter of fact. Pulling half into a bounce front, and she can do that in her sleep. She's carrying in a mark of 9.875 in second place. Entering the finals to her teammate, Elenko. Watch the uh, Egyptian movement here now. She loves to do it. the United States last about three years ago. She had curtain call after curtain call. Here comes her double twister back for this mount. Well, Al, it doesn't have enormous difficulty, but it does have fine performance. A lot of appeal to the crowd, too, as Elena Davidova of the Soviet Union completes her floor exercise. And she was trailing her teammate, Elenko, by 0.025. And we'll show you a replay of a, a move that will really test an otherwise hefty ankle. She's going to do a one and a half twisting back somersault into a bounce front, and the stress is just incredible. There's a full and a half twister, bounce into a front, and the G-forces through that ankle are unbelievable. Davidova, the crowd expected a 10, and as you can see there on top, just one judge. Going to start with a backflip through to a double back somersault. Great tumbling, and then she'll couple that with some very dynamic dancing. Her face is so expressive, and her arms and hands, just terrific. Yanko needs a 9.9 .9 to clinch the gold medal in the floor exercise. a sensational exercise. Absolutely incredible. Natalia Ilyenko may very well have her 9-9 or even better as she tries to wrap up first place in the floor exercise. Let's have another look at the first tumbling run by Ilyenko. Well, as expressed in this mount, five. And a clinch for Natalia Ilyenko of the Soviet Union. As close to perfection as you can get in the 4X. And Max 
Maxica now after taking three. Maxi not even in the finals here. So your other winner to place coming into the finals, carrying a mark of 9.825. If she were to get a 9.95 or a 10, that would shut out Julianne McNamara. It cost her any chance to win a medal. Watch this triple full. Wow. And a disco beat you won't believe. So far, her tumbling is just as good as her dancing. Triple full mount, then a double back for a second pass. She'll be attempting a double back for a final pass also. Now let's just watch her work. <laughs> 